The first lesson of chapter 9 is 9-1 linear functions. This whole chapter is about slope, how to find slope, uh, different forms of slope. Actually, this is probably the hardest chapter in the book. Uh, so if we can get through this, we can get through anything. So let's get started. So linear functions. Now I have a lot of vocabulary words to start with. And the first vocabulary word I have is the word function. Okay, Function is when you put something in, depends on what you get out. So like if you put a number in for a letter in, a, uh, in an expression or a equation, what you put in for that letter is going to depend on what you get out. So it might be a different answer. So this is a function machine right here that I just showed a picture of. So and I, it kind of shows if you put something in, and it's usually x. So like, for example, if you have 2x plus 1. You're going to put something in for x, and to solve it, that's what you get out. So this is what you put in, and this is what you get out. Now in life, there's a lot of different types of functions. Uh, uh, easy one that comes to mind is a toaster. You put in bread, and toast comes out. So if you think about it, it has to come out in like a different format or a different way. So another example would be like a pot machine. You put in money, and out comes a pop. That would be a function machine. A washing machine would be another example. You put in dirty clothes, and clean clothes come out. So when you think of a function, it just means you're putting something in, and you're getting something different out. And that's what we're going to be doing today. A few other definitions I have for you, and I have quite a few. And all of these things are going to be used consistently throughout the chapter. So the first vocabulary word I have is relation. And a relation is a set of ordered pairs. So if you remember, an ordered pair looks something like this. Okay, that's an ordered pair. Now a relation would maybe have a whole bunch of them. This would be considered a relation. It's a set of ordered pairs. Domain are all the x values in that relation. So if I use what I had up here, my x values in there would be 2, 4, and 5. These are the domain of that relation. Because I have 2 in the x, I have 4 in the x, and I have 5 in the x. Then range is the set of the y values. So if I look up back, back at my relation, I have 3, 1, and 0. So 3, 1, and 0 would be considered the range in that relation. Independent variable is what you put into the expression. So in other words, basically what you put in for x, and we're always going to be using x and y from now on, x and y all the time, no other letters. Dependent variable is what you're going to get out, and that's usually y. And then I have a little example that can show you. So if this is my, my function or my um, expression, what I put in for x is known as my dependent variable, and my, or, I'm sorry, my independent variable, my y is my dependent variable. And the answer is the dependent variable is because what you put in depends on what you get for an answer. So that's why this is the dependent variable, because that answer depends on what you put in. So just make sure you know for sure the domain and range, because that's going to show up a lot. And I, I'll show you some examples of that. And independent and dependent are going to show up a little bit too. All right, so rule of functions. Remember, function machines, you put something in, you get something out. So there's two different rules for functions. Okay, this is the first rule, and they're kind of hard to understand, but I'll tell you a story to have you, have you understand. So two different input values, meaning two different x values, can have the same y value. So like if I was going to put an x, I would get this for y. And if I put in this for x, I could get this for y. Now look at my tens are the same. But that's okay, because your y values can be the same, and it would be considered a function. We'll do some examples of this also. The second rule, and I'll make sure you get this stuff written down, because this is really important when it comes to your homework. Then, if you have two different output values, so let's say I have um, two different outputs. See how I have my y's are the different things? And notice that my input values are the same. This is not a function. So in other words, you can't have the same x throughout. Now let me explain. Let's go back to the top one. Okay. Let's say 
you buy three pairs of socks for $10. Okay? You go to the store, you buy three pairs of socks for 10 bucks. You go to the store the next day, and there's a sign that says you get three pairs of socks plus two free, and it's still going to only cost you $10. That's why this is a function. That could legit happen at the store. Let me say it again. You buy three pairs of socks for 10 bucks. You go back the next day, and maybe there's a sign that says, oh, you can, if you buy three, you get two free. Then you get five pairs of socks for $10. That's why this is a function, because that can legit happen at the store. Okay? Let's talk about this one now. Let me tell you why this isn't a function. Let's say you go to the store, and you buy nine gallons of milk, and it costs you $30. Well, if you'd go back... And there's no sign or anything. There's no way that nine gallons of milk are all of a sudden going to cost you $40. It's not going to work that way. So this is why this isn't a function, because there's no way you could go buy nine gallons of milk for 30 bucks. If you go back an hour later and buy nine gallons of milk, it should still be $30. It shouldn't raise to 40 bucks, unless they have some big inflation things that happen in 60 minutes. So this is why this is considered not a function. So one of the probably the most valuable things on this page is this. Y values are the same, it's okay, it's a function. If you cannot have the same X throughout, and I'll do some more examples of that in a second. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this, and I'm going to see if this is a function or not. Remember we talked about this is a relation. A relation is a group of, um, a group of coordinate pairs. So I'm going to look, and I'm going to look, it doesn't matter about the Y. It really only matters about the X. So I'm just going to go through and underline all my Xs. And I have a negative 3. I have a negative 2, I have a negative 1, I have a 0, and I have a 1. All my x's are different, so this would be considered a function. Honestly, we don't even have to look at the y's. We have to look at the x's. So this would be considered a function. Okay, so here's another example. Um, I have it in a table this time, and this could happen in your homework. So we're going to look at the x values. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, all different x values, so this would be considered a function. Now it might say, name the domain in the range. Well, if you go back to your, to your notes, all the x values would be 1, 3, oh, I'm sorry, 1, 2, 3, 4. These are, can be considered the domain. And the y values, 1, 4, 9, 16. These would be the range values. And that would be all you have to name for that. I'm going to go back here, and I'm going to go to this one, and I'm going to have you name the domain and the range for this relation. So I want you to think about what the domain numbers are and what the range numbers are for a relation like this. Now there's a super simple way to do this, and you can use a t-chart, actually. It works very simple. X and Y. And you would take this and put it in. And you take the next one and you put it into your, to your table. And you could say this whole side is the domain. And this whole side is the range. It's really short and simple and sweet. Making a t-chart works really, really well. Okay, so we talked about how to tell if a relation is a function just by the coordinate pairs. We've talked about telling if it's a function in a table. Now, how can you tell if something is a function on a graph? Now, this is actually super simple. It's called using the vertical line test. So you take a vertical line or your pencil. A lot of times people use a pencil. And they'll determine whether or not a graph is a function. And here's the thing. The line can only intersect the graph one time. Meaning if I would take this line here and I'd go to my first dot, there's only one dot that lays on that line. I go to the next one, there's only one dot that lays on that line. I'm going to go to the next line. There's one dot, there's one dot, there's no dots. Now if I get to this one, see how there's two dots on this line? That means that there's two x values that are the same. If we would pull off all these points, there's two x values that are the same. So this would be not a function. So if you take your vertical line and you run it over every, oops, I'm sorry, over, run it over every dot. Come on, see if I can get it back. There we go. And you run it over every dot, and as long as there's only one dot that falls on that line, 
then it's a function. But this is not because, oh, there's one, there's one, there's one, there's two. That means that there's two x values on this graph that are the same. All right, the last thing I want to talk about is something called function notation. Now, we're getting into more algebra stuff. Now, before, we talked about stuff like this, how to solve equations. Oh, x is 4. We're going to put it in and solve. Now, there's another type of format of this, and it's called function notation. It looks very, very similar. The only different thing is what's over here on the other side of the equal sign. This is why this one on the right is called function notation, because there's the f, and this is called f of x function. So, you know, you could have gx, you could have tx, you honestly could have anything, but for the most part, they have f of x. This is going to be the only difference today. So if you could solve something like this over here, when I have x is 4, I'm going to put 4 in there, solve. You can do the function notation. So let me show you how this is going to work. They're going to give you the function notation. What means, if you can remember at the beginning, I talked about a function is a rule or a machine. Well, this is considered our machine. We're going to put something in, and we're going to get something out. So here's our machine. So over here, I'm going to write what this is. Now, it's going to give you something that says f of x. Now, it doesn't mean it should be look. It should look like this because that's what most people think. They most people think we should just substitute it in like that, but that's not correct. Okay, so don't think you're just going to substitute it in and solve. What's going to happen is you're going to take this five and you're going to put it in for x. Okay, this is your input. Okay, what you put in for x. Now you're just going to solve. It would be 20 minus 7, which would be 13. This would be your output, and that's the answer we're looking for. That's the answer. So you put something in, and this is what your output was after you solve this. We're going to try again. So I'm going to put my machine here, my function machine. Now I'm going to take this, and I'm going to substitute it in it for x. And I'm going to solve. Well, I know this is going to be negative 24. Minus 7, I'm going to have to keep change, change. This is going to be a negative 31. So basically, you've done this before. We're just calling it a different name. All right, why don't you try these two for me? It says f of x is 6x plus 5. So 6x plus 5 would be your basically your function machine. You're going to put 7 in to your machine. This is going to be 42 plus 5. You get 47. 47 is your output, what you're going to get out of that machine. Same thing here. This would be negative 24 plus 5. This would be negative 19, and that's your output of your machine. If you have any questions, let me know. I appreciate you watching till the end of the lesson, and I'll see you next class period.